of tomorrow, 18 hours special initiative that celebrates the undying entrepreneurial spirit of micro, small and medium enterprises. This is the only daily MSME platform in the country, a show where you can voice your concerns and get answers to all your queries directly from our team of experts. We understand the issues that you, the MSME entrepreneur, face and this show aims to bring you the most relevant and the most updated information on everything related to your businesses. Tonight on MSME Dialogues, we're bringing you a special conversation that I did earlier with Ganesh Ayer, the CEO of uh, mid-tier IT firm Emphasis on a recent visit to New York. He spoke about a whole host of issues from fears of the IT industry over possible changes to regulation in the US to demonetization to industry trends. Listen. In. Manisha, thank you very much for speaking with us here uh, on the Leaders of Tomorrow. Uh, let's talk about the impact of uh, the currency demonetization that's really taken place in India of later. Your initial comments on that and also the impact that one is likely to see as far as the Indian IT space is concerned? Personally, I think it's a brilliant move, much needed move, totally supported because um, India needs to find its potential. One of the things which has been uh, eating our country has been corruption. Now, uh, there is there are many people who said, oh, we could have done something else. That's not the point. The point is this has been done. Will it help in bringing down the corruption? If yes, then this is a move which we must support. We must go all out to support it. I think while short term there may be um, challenges for people, even the fact that uh, the parallel economy may get hurt, you may see some downward uh, trend. But uh, on a mid to long term basis, this augurs very well for the country, whether it is for IT services or manufacturing or any other industry for that matter. Because if you have an economy which is transparent and a single economy which is uh, driving the overall success of the country, then that's good for the country. So completely support it. Something that you like talking about quite a bit, Ganesh, is the fact that uh, Emphasis is a digital company. It was born in the digital era and therefore has always been digital ready. So let's talk about uh, digitization as well as, uh, you know, what digital really means when it comes to small companies in India and how they can go about enhancing and embracing uh, digital and technology more as far as their businesses are concerned. See, um, when you say smaller companies, if you're talking about truly small companies, uh, one of the important elements that they have to understand is why are they getting their business today? And will that be threatened by uh, the digital economy or digital era? Once you are clear about that, then you have to take the next step. Fundamentally, I am a believer that smaller companies have an advantage during the digital era simply because if you were operating in an analog era, and now you have to move to digital area. Your turning radius is smaller. You would be able to transform faster. You would be able to compete better than with, with larger companies who have to defend, who have to protect their legacy business. So to that extent, you enjoy uh, this opportunity to quickly transform and be the aggressor. But there is one challenge. The challenge is realization of the power of technology, realization of uh, the model of digital that brings to you, realization on why you are getting business, why you are making profits and taking that home in a digital era. For that, um, you know, if you are a proprietor, if you are the CEO, uh, whosoever is the, the topmost person in that uh, small enterprise has to become very conversant with the power of digital, slight understanding of technology. And probably you should also have somebody who can advise you on technology. This is not all about technology. This is actually about business. So business people will get it like this. The, the challenge is if when you don't understand technology, but you may start backing out, don't. Have somebody who can advise you on technology, leverage your business acumenship, and you can move forward. Uh, so your advice, Ganesh, in terms of how companies can possibly go ahead and stay ahead of the curve. Uh, you're at a point where you're talking, for example, about AI. You've uh, you know launched uh, uh, products that are in the AI space. Maybe you can talk to our viewers about how they ensure that not only are they embracing technology, but they're also staying ahead of the curve. So as I said, um, it's very important to understand what this digital means. Because many people who are not technology savvy, 
we uh, shy away from this discussion thinking digital is all about technology. Uh, my first point is, no, it is not about technology, it's about business. It's about doing new way of doing business, new way of bringing products to the market, new way of serving your clients, new way of getting new clients. So it's all about business. So if you have business acumen, if you understand the concept of digital, you will get it. Now, on technology bit, you can always hire somebody who can help you with um, technology bit. So this is an opportunity for MSME to move forward. Ultimately, a client has to be served. And closer you are to the client, better you can serve them. And I see MSMEs have very intense relationship with their clients, which is the relationship they can leverage to be successful in digital era. Because uh, newer players have to learn about your clients, have to they will have won't have that personal touch which you have. So you have an advantage. Just make use of the advantage and take it home. Of the 36 million MSMEs in India at this point, uh, uh, reports suggest that nearly 75 to 80 percent of them could be family-run businesses. Uh, given uh, that uh, perspective, maybe you can talk to our viewers about any sort of uh, global lessons in excellence that they should be possibly picking up. Actually, there are lots of good examples in India too, where family-run businesses are being run very, very professionally and uh, they are progressive. They are looking at newer ways of doing business. So it's a question of uh, what type of people are occupying those seats. If your only criteria is that you have to be a family member to hold that seat, then that's a challenge. But if you inject professionalism, professional qualification, experience, and they happen to be family members, it's good for the business. There is continuity, there is clarity, there is certainty, because after all, What's the difference between family and promoter-led businesses? Because promoters also hold either majority position in the board, right? So family-run businesses can be as good as uh, promote. In fact, in some cases, can be better than promoter-led businesses. So I don't think that that uh, India uh, has a has a unique problem. In fact, I believe that India has some good examples. I would shy away from naming those examples. In fact, I interact with some of these uh, family-run businesses to understand how they have become progressive. So uh, there are good examples in India. You don't have to come to the U.S. Uh, to learn about them. We've seen a lot of changes that are really taking place at Emphasis Ganesh. Uh, Top-level changes, managerial, if you want to call it that, uh, uh, so over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, we're talking, of course, in the backdrop of uh, what is happening in India in terms of some uh, top-level managerial and management changes, really, uh, at India Inc. Now, can you talk to us about your initial thoughts on that? When you say managerial changes, you are referring to the shareholding changes, where a majority share owner, uh, Blackstone, bought the shares from HPE. And uh, we saw this transition to be smooth, uh, structured. And, and good for our customers. Uh, so th I think the, at the end of the day, uh, it goes back to proper communication. It goes back to commitment to professionalism. And last but not least, also the viewpoint that the new shareholder has about the company. Uh, Blackstone clearly is committed to furthering the good things that we are carrying on and wants to bring a perspective on areas where we can you know, do better or improve. So where I don't see any conflict personally. Uh, for example, our new growth engine could be Blackstone portfolio companies, which was not available to us prior to Blackstone. So why shouldn't we feel excited about it? Second thing is as a result of the transaction, now we have a new master services agreement with HP with a guaranteed volume, which we didn't have before. That's also good for our, uh, our shareholders and all our employees. So it brings you know, stability, predictability, and acceleration, which is overall good for emphasis. So why should there be any problem? So as long as there is congruence in objective, proper communication, and commitment to professionalism, even if there are changes at leadership level, they can be managed well. Because at the end of the day, there is commonality in what we are trying to achieve. So if I'm going to pick up on that and say, what happens if there's no sense of commonality, then what happens? See, um, when you appoint a new CEO or a new chairman, 
for one to expect that the new CEO or the new chairman will do exactly what the previous chairman or CEO uh, did, then why change? Keep the old CEO and old chairman. I mean, you are bringing a new person who is coming with newer ideas, newer ways of looking at issues, newer ways of solving it, bringing about positivity to the environment, making the organization relevant to the future. So obviously, the person is trying to do something different. And that's why you brought a different person. You don't want a clone to be sitting there. So um, if, if a new CEO comes in, you have to give that CEO the rope the flexibility, the freedom to bring about changes. Just because uh, you know you were the previous person and you see changes, it's not a personal insult on you. You just need to take it professionally and give that freedom and carry on. But when you do react negatively, actually you are taking the company two steps backwards. First step backward is you are changing the CEO who has been appointed. Two, Suddenly you are trying to undo all the good things that the previous CEO has done or the new CEO has done and kind of rolling it back. While you are doing all this, your employees are confused, your customers are confused and rest of your investors are looking at you and saying, what's going on? See, instability and uncertainty is the worst thing that can happen to any company. We need to look at stability and certainty. At the same time, giving the freedom to the CEO or the chairman to try out new things. Let's take a quick break on that note, but we'll continue this conversation with Ganesha here on the other side. Just stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on the Leaders of Tomorrow, and I'm in conversation with Emphasis. We were talking about commonality earlier when you were talking about succession planning. But let's also talk about commonality when it comes to inorganic growth or uh, you know acquisitions. Uh, when companies, our MSMEs are going ahead and looking at acquisitions, what would your recommendation be in terms of how to integrate these acquisitions more smoothly into the business? See, um, why you are doing an inorganic is, is a very, very important part of success of inorganic. If you're just doing inorganic to have better revenue run rate, that's a that's a very weak case in my mind. Seventy percent of uh, inorganic acquisitions tend to be suboptimal, which means only thirty percent succeed. If that is the case, one has to understand why that happens. So, if you're clear on your objective, then you know half the work is done. Once you are clear on the objective, go ahead and acquire and at the same time, uh, you need to ensure there are actually two or three models of, of uh, integration, tightly coupled and tightly governed um, and loosely coupled and tightly governed, loosely coupled, loosely governed. Right? These are the three models of integration if I may you need to choose based on the objective that you have set which is the model that works but it is very very important to um, in an inorganic acquisition that we act and behave as one family it may be two separate members but we act and behave as one family that is completely non-negotiable for one to feel that they are not part of one family so the cultural integration is very important and um, as far as MSME is concerned, there is an advantage because you are smaller. So as a result, when you do inorganic, you can integrate faster. So inorganic can be an effective tool, but uh, what may be lacking is structured thinking allow, uh, around uh, how to select the right uh, uh, company and secondly, how to integrate them well. No conversation of late is complete, of course, without touching upon GST. Uh, do you think the industry is ready? Do you think technology is at the level at which it should be for an effective GST rollout? See, um, GST is a good thing. And the whole objective of GST is to simplify and make it easier for everybody to comply. Today what has happened is um, the GST has got tremendous support, so good. There are lots of uh, nitty gritties which have not been clarified. It's very important for those to be clarified because the original objective is simplification. 
not making it more complicated. Somehow during this period there are some clarifications which are required which somehow can lead to more complication if it is not clarified quickly because technology can't be ready unless those basic principles are clarified. We are hoping those clarifications come faster and then the technology would be ready. Uh, whether one should be ready to get uh, to be complying with it, I think um, it may be slightly a small challenge, but it can be done. Uh, but uh, most important issue is to stick to the original intent simplification and ensure that those areas which are not clarified get clarified quickly. Like what? Uh, can you give our viewers examples of what exactly you are talking about? See, um, for an IT industry, uh, you know, there are elements, uh, whether you can carry on doing compliance centrally or suddenly you were doing service tax compliance centrally, now you have to do it in multiple points, which means that your uh, compliance cost goes up and then you have to deal with so many different parties. So we have to figure out for IT services industry, which has a presence in multiple states in India, is it making it more complicated or less complicated? I'm sure the underlying principle of making it simpler is what government is try, striving to, to do. But during the transition period, probably there are some you know kind of uh, implementation issues. But if we solve them quickly, make sure IT services industry doesn't get burdened with more cost of compliance, and most importantly, you know, uh, making even the compliance more difficult. Hence, uh, my point is um, make it simpler for IT industry as well. We are also of course coming up on the budget very soon and it's going to happen uh, earlier this year than previous years. Uh, what are you looking forward to from the budget? I mean, my expectation is simplification Where, because I believe that, uh, you know, IT services, I, represent, I mean, I speak for IT services industry, it's run very professionally they are uh, completely um, transparent above board so in that context if you make it simply uh, if you simplify it will attract more investment we are already facing the challenge of intense competition in the marketplace and it is important that the government continues <coughs> to nurture and support IT services industry I realize that we generate uh, quite a bit of profits and we are paying taxes and and everybody wants to see us paying taxes. That's not the issue. The issue is, can you simplify so that we are able to focus on ensuring that we are able to add more value to our clients, beat our competition, and continue to fly our tricolor high. I quickly want to touch upon also uh, some of the changes that we've been seeing across the world, whether it's Brexit, uh, whether it's the impact of how other currencies have really played out as far as your own sector is concerned. Uh, what has been the impact? Do you think the worst of that is over? See, we, uh, we have had hedging policy always in place uh, and that acts as a cushion towards, uh, you know, wild fluctuations in currency. So we we'll continue to um, employ that. But uh, if you're talking about events such as Brexit, and other activities which have caused some upheaval. Anything which causes uncertainty is not just for IT services, for, but for every industry it is it's a challenge. Now in case of Brexit, well, it hasn't happened actually, but uncertainty around the date and how it is going to be carried out, how it kinds of pans out is customers slow down their decision making, they don't undertake massive projects. And that's something which we can't provide for, right? We have to just take it on our chin and then, then tackle it. Um, and uh, I expect with the advent of digital era, where things will happen at a faster pace, we will see more of this across the globe and not less of this. Um, because faster decision making, compressed time frame, you will see, you know, quickly up and down. We may just need to get used to it and that will become the new normal, if I may. So as we go to start 2017, does the year look any easier when it comes to uh, the impact really that we're seeing, uh, whether it is out of uh, global currency volatility, whether it is out of uh, geopolitical situations and events that are taking place across the world? I don't expect it to be easier. In fact, uh, my uh, prediction would be that it would be more challenging. But challenge also offers an opportunity for us. Um, challenging from the point of view of um, that new generation services will make a deeper penetration 
automation will get a stronger hold. Um, you will see immersive computing uh, coming into mainstream. Lots of uh, things which will keep changing. So I don't expect it to be easier. Uh, I expect it to be challenging, but uh, that's where the opportunity lies, I guess. Tonight, I've brought you a voice from uh, the IT space. And do remember that if you're a business that wants to be featured here on the Leaders of Tomorrow, or you have any question about any aspect of your business, you can write in to us at leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. Uh, you can personally tweet at me at Sunam J. You can reach us on social media using the hashtag LOT or call us on that number you see flashing on your screen. We promise to have all your questions answered. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.